the conversation that always crops up in February that honestly is kind of stupid, but we're going to have it right now. It's tonight a must win for the Vols. Number one, Alabama season seems to be slightly going off the rails. Is it a must win? I'm going to say, I'm going to say yes. I, Whoa, this is a, here you let, go. Let me, let me explain why. Tennessee's got a, I don't think people understand how brutal the rest of Tennessee's schedule is. I talked about it yesterday. You could feasibly see them go one and five down the stretch. It's a rough, rough schedule. Um, Alabama is probably their fourth hardest game. Alabama at home is probably their fourth hardest game because Davis, you know, I don't know why, but I feel like college basketball is the one sport where home court being at home matters the most, more than any other sport. And I think that Alabama playing at Tennessee, they have a chance to win. Tennessee has a chance to win. A better chance to beat Alabama than they do Auburn on the road, Kentucky on the road, Texas A&M on the road. I I think they have to win this game. Mainly okay. because there's no championship involved anymore. I don't think they can win the SEC anymore. But you got to have some sort of momentum going into the NCAA tournament. Okay, there are no must wins right now. You you don't. The season is not over. A must win is when you're in the NCAA tournament. So, but a must show is where I'll I'll let this lie. You got to show up. You got to play the number one team well at home. You've got to absolutely show up. If Tennessee plays flat as I believe they have, I don't think it's just a style issue. I think this team has not found itself. And ultimately, if this team can't do that, then you've got a real issue. If they can't do it pretty quickly, you've got a real issue. So Tennessee, I think it's a must show. They're not going to lose out on anything if they lose tonight. If they get beat on another 40-footer at the buzzer and they played the number one team in the nation really well, Hey, I can I could roll with that if I'm Tennessee fan out there. Um, if if they show up and they get beat by 16, 18 points, and their offense looks like sludge as it has for much of the season, and especially the past two weeks, then I think there is real, real reason for concern on a Thursday morning. I agree. I agree. I think um, this team is starting to remind me, and it shouldn't because this team is significantly more talented. And we're going to have Ron Slay on soon, and I'll talk to him about this. But that remember Buzz Peterson's first team where I feel like Tennessee lost like seven games while last second shots that year? It was crazy. There was a Louisville game where they were up by six with 30 seconds to go, and Reese Gaines banks in like three threes. <laughs> um, and you're, you're starting to feel like this Tennessee team has that just bad juju, bad luck. Yeah, and, no, it it, it does feel a little bit like that. I think they're in their own heads. And I want to ask Ron Slay about that. And I just the the identity aspect that they haven't found that yet. But listen, if you, you you've really heightened the stakes, if if you're Danny White, by doing this checkerboard thing. And um, listen, I love the checkerboard thing. If it's planned out and you do it for every Kentucky game and every Alabama game, I'm all for it. But doing it for this seems to just raise the stakes a little bit and it doesn't raise the stakes in a good way. If Tennessee wins, they're supposed to win at home. I mean, they're a top 10 team. So you should beat even the number one team at home, at home. So, and they were number two, just what, 10 days ago. So yeah. you should beat that team at home. However, if you lose tonight, then you've lost to the number one team. You're likely we could drop in the rankings a little bit further. Listen, they're at 10. And and right now, I, I don't know where they go if they have to have two. If they have to have two points late in the game, Caleb, where do they go? Yeah, we've been talking about that for a while. And, I, you know, we thought for a while it would be Santi Vescovi. But, I mean, there's a clutch issue with Santi. I'm sorry, there just is. And you talk about things being in your head. If you allow things to get into your head, then you don't have the clutch gene. You have it or you don't. And... And if you don't have it, then it's scary to go to a guy like Santi. Um, you would think maybe Julian Phillips is the five-star, but he really hasn't exerted himself this year, and now he's banged up. But I, I don't think any of us really trust Z Zakai, I think, has the clutch gene. I think Zakai plays hard, but he also plays reckless. So I don't know if you want him, the ball in his hands in the last minute or 30 seconds. Um, so I, I agree. I don't, know, I don't know who it is, who that guy is, and – and uh, again, the bigs just have 
the bigs are not drawing the attention they need to draw to themselves. They're not, people aren't scared of them. And, you know, inside out basketball is a problem when your outside game can't shoot and your inside game can't draw attention. <laughs> that takes away the whole point of inside out basketball. No, it absolutely does. Some key matchups that you'll be watching tonight. Is there anything in, in particular that, that stands out to you? We've kind of addressed uh, Tennessee, uh, nine players with double digit minutes. Um, yeah, t- they still have to find their rotation, which is odd to have as of February the 15th. Um, as far as tempo, how do you see this game shaking out? What are the keys to the game? I think um, the key is can Tennessee, you just said it, can they keep up with Alabama's tempo? They're going to run full court and they're going to play fast. And can Tennessee hang? I mean, I think Rick Barnes has done a little bit better going small ball the last couple of weeks. Um, I don't think this is a game where you put Plavchik on the floor that much. You, they, he wasn't on the floor much last week. I don't think he's going to be on the floor much um, in this one. Although the question is, I, I, you know, on the other side, you would, you would hope that Rick Barnes would have the team where he could put his bigs in and force Alabama to play Tennessee's game and play slow. But quite honestly, when Tennessee forces teams to play their game, no one really has a problem playing that game because they're not that much of a threat with their half-court offense. No, it's a great point. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit the subscribe if you haven't done it to this point. Campbell Cunningham, Taylor, and Hahn, Vision Center, and they do it right, whether you're talking about LASIK or cataract surgery or just regular – Uh, I care. Campbell Cunningham, Taylor, and Han, they are absolutely fantastic. And uh, pass wins versus number one teams, Tennessee has been able to uh, do that before. And, uh, Caleb, there are some notable ones. Which ones would you throw out there as uh, ones that stand out to you? Uh, Under Rick Barnes, they beat Gonzaga about three years ago. That was the best team Tennessee has had under Rick Barnes with Admiral Schofield and Grant Williams. The one I remember the most – is when they upset number one Kansas in 2010, I think, with Bruce Pearl. Tennessee had had four players get suspended. Their best player, Tyler Smith, dismissed from the team because of running around with an unregistered weapon in a car. And they were starting walk-ons in that game. And Kansas was was undefeated, came to Knoxville, and Tennessee shocked them. And that was that's probably one of the most memorable ones. The other one that, that we all remember is Number two versus number one, Tennessee-Memphis 2008 in-state rivalry basketball. Two versus one matchup, Tennessee beats Memphis at Memphis. The, that was that 2008, the two Bruce Pearl years when they beat number one teams are probably the two best they've ever had. 